All right, YouTube, on my last uh, literary video regarding a poll on uh, pos a possible fine binding or hardcover edition of uh, one of my grimoires, a lot of people were mentioning you should write a work that's related to politics. I already did that. Uh, I think that a lot of the people asking me to do so are they're newcomers, so they probably didn't see me announce After the Ashes you know, back in 2015. So I'm going to re-announce it here. It's one of the more popular works honestly in my catalog of releases. Uh, I, I can understand why. Over time it's growing uh, in popularity more and more specifically because I think people realize at this point there's a significant death march towards an atomic holocaust uh, currently happening. It's unfortunate, it doesn't need to happen, but when you've got a presidential candidate, the one who happens to be ahead, um, spending, you know, about a year blaming Russia for all of her problems, Russia being the only other major nuclear state in the world, I can understand it'd probably be kind of difficult if she's elected for her to work with them on trying to scale back <laughs> nuclear intentions on both sides. We have Putin now, some time ago, gave a speech in which he uh, spoke... Uh, very openly, honestly, about the fact that he felt like the United States was trying to encircle the Russians uh, with anti-missile systems as part of a greater scheme to eventually wage a nuclear war. I happen to concur with this mentality. I'm not a supporter of the Russian state, but that is ultimately the strategy that has been in place since roughly the 1970s, encirclement and eventually disarmament, which I don't think will work. I think it's suicidal to even try with our current technology, but apparently people like Clinton and Obama disagree with me. Is it any wonder that the world's so screwed up when this is their uh, limited ability of thought? Uh, anyway, I've decided to leave behind the concept of a manuscript of survivalism because there are already hundreds of other works under the sun that contain that sort of content. I decided to go more the philosophical route for this. Yes, there are some basic basic tips in there about the most basic necessities that you could possibly need if you want to survive, at least in the midterm. Um, but has anybody ever talked about some of the other, uh, perhaps, side effects of an atomic war. For instance, what about nuclear meltdowns in the wake of such an exchange? I've read no other work that covers this topic, even though the radiation release from all of those plants melting down, at least within those regions, would be far greater than the bombs themselves. Nobody ever talks about the rabies outbreaks that would almost certainly engulf large parts of the world as feral populations surviving on the fringes of now decimated cities have ready access to scavenging all of that food, you get feral dog and cat populations out of control, they get rabies into them, they get other diseases into them, they begin starving, they become quite dangerous. Uh, even dealing with a problem such as sewage, well, your sewage system is no longer working, what are you going to do about that? What time of year, uh, it, especially within the northern hemisphere, such a war may erupt, also plays a role. If uh, everything's frozen and covered in three feet of snow, you might expect that some of that radiation will leach off mainly into water uh, and eventually make its way to the ocean, specifically because a lot of that radioactive ash will be mm, not soaking into the soil because the soil in places like Vermont is frozen solid. All that water runs off in the spring. Very little of it gets soaked into the soil when it first begins to thaw out. It would probably be kind of protective as opposed to, oh, huh, the bombs fell in the middle of May. Oh, so, so sorry there was a rainstorm at the time bringing all of that radiation deep into your soil. You'll never grow anything healthy there again. Uh, these are things that people, I think, need to think about quite seriously. In such an exchange, you're not just talking short-term, well, take your iodine pills and stay in the basement for a couple of weeks and then magically everything gets better. What about whether or not there's a nuclear winter at all? They've, science still doesn't even agree upon that. What about any hidden arsenals that some of these lesser nuclear states may have? Um, what about the possibility that some out-of-the-way state would invade you once you've been crippled? Either because they think that you're barbarians for having used nukes in the first place, or it's just a land grab. Some southern hemispheric state specifically that won't you know, suffer the direct impact of fallout to any great degree. Um, what, what targets are likely to actually be targeted and so forth. Uh, I ruminate upon all these things. Now a lot of it's just my opinion. Uh, but that being said, nobody has experienced a nuclear war. There's nobody who can say with certainty what happens other than a lot of urban centers get blown sky high. 
radiation does filter its way through the atmosphere and blanket at least most of the northern hemisphere, and lots and lots of people die. But the after effects are rarely spoken of. Nobody wants to talk about all those nuclear plants that will melt down, that will begin to smolder uncontrolled. They won't be able to contain them because there won't be anybody left to contain the, ma the uh, mess. They won't have the resources to do so. Uh, they certainly won't have the population to do what the Russians did with Chernobyl and cover it over with dirt in a sarcophagus. You won't be able to find anyone willing to do work anyway because your economy is broken down. So much radiation would be released from the nuclear plants alone, it'll be a, a miracle if anybody in the entire northern hemisphere actually survives, no matter how much of a bunker complex they have. Even the idea of building a bunker in such a situation, while precautionary, might be totally useless. You might find you put your little Geiger counter up there and you find two years have passed and the radiation level is still sky high and unsurvivable. So these are things that people, I think, potentially should be thinking about. So yeah, if you're interested in purchasing a copy of After the Ashes, I already wrote this work back in 2015. It's nothing new. Uh, it's become quite popular. And this is the only work, by the way, just as an aside, this is the only time I used a shiny cover rather than a dull sort of textured cover. Specifically, I wanted it to be shiny and yellow because if somebody's actually consulting it, they probably are going to have to find it in a pile of debris or the power is out and it's pitch black, so it should be reflective and bright and easier thus to find. Um, sort of a, a wasteland survival guide for the real world, I suppose you could say. That's about all. Peace out.